Coming up on Arirang News, South Korean President Moon Jae-in marks four years in office with a national address, pledging to resume dialogue with North Korea in the fifth and final year of his term, which he said will be the last opportunity to achieve lasting peace. President Moon pledging also to support Korea's semiconductor industry as a way to boost growth this year, and his real estate policies, he says, will be revisited since they've so far not achieved their aims. And to keep South Korea's vaccination campaign running smoothly, the government says it'll pay the treatment expenses for people who have severe adverse reactions to their vaccine. It's 5 o'clock p.m. here in Seoul. Thank you for joining us on Arirang News. I'm Devin Whiting. We start with a special address given this morning by President Moon Jae-in to mark his fourth year in office. Moon said the fifth and final year of his term will be the most important, with the goal of achieving lasting peace on the Korean Peninsula. He also said he plans to get people's lives back to normal by speeding up the vaccination campaign. Kim Min-ji has the details. the last opportunity to establish irreversible peace on the Korean Peninsula. That's how President Moon Jae-in defined his final year in office during a special address Monday to mark the fourth anniversary of his inauguration. Moon said it's now time for action after a long period of deliberation. Moon is scheduled to sit down for talks with U.S. President Joe Biden in Washington on May 21st, with North Korea expected to top the agenda. The South Korean leader welcomed the U.S. policy review on North Korea, saying that it's an outcome based on close consultation between Seoul and Washington. He said that although the details have yet to be unveiled, it's more or less the direction South Korea had hoped for, calling it a flexible, gradual and practical approach that builds upon the foundation laid by the Singapore Declaration. There's been no significant development since the North Korea-U.S. summit in Hanoi in 2019. Moon said he will not be pressed by time or become impatient during the remainder of his term, but will do everything he can if there is a chance to advance the peace process. And he called for a positive response from North Korea. 북한의 어, 이런저런 반응이 있었지만 그 북한의 반응이 그 대화를 거부한 것이라고 생각하지 않습니다. 어, 아마 북한도 어, 이제 마지막 판단의 시간을 가질 것이라고 생각합니다. 어, 다시 한번더 어, 이렇게 마주 앉아서 협의할 수 있는 기회가 주어진 만큼 어, 북한이 호응하기를 Another goal during the remainder of his tenure is overcoming the COVID-19 pandemic. The president said more than 13 million South Koreans will be given vaccines in the first half of this year. He pledged continued efforts to procure more vaccines to prepare against variants and the potential need for an extra third shot. Speculation has it that vaccine procurement may also be on the table during the Moon-Biden summit. President Moon said it was a shame that South Korea couldn't start vaccination sooner, but reassured the public that the government's inoculation program is going as scheduled. He said the government is aiming to give first shots to all those eligible by the end of September and achieve herd immunity before the current target of November. Kim Min-ji, Arirang News. And in that speech, President Moon also pledged all-round support to help South Korea keep its top spot in the global semiconductor industry. That will also help achieve the economic growth target he announced for this year of at least 4 percent. He also said he'll continue working on real estate policy to meet the needs of the people, acknowledging that those policies have yet to achieve their aims. Hong Yu reports. President Moon Jae-in has pledged to strengthen support so that South Korea's strategic industries can continue leading the global market. And one of those strategic industries is semiconductors. During a special address to mark the fourth anniversary of his inauguration on Monday, the president added that the country will take advantage of the current semiconductor boom as an opportunity for a new leap forward. President Moon Jae-in said that the government plans to support the private sector so that South Korea's economy can grow by at least 4 percent this year. 
pointing out that all economic indicators show a solid recovery. The president said that the government aims for a faster and stronger economic rebound. Talking to reporters after his special address, the president acknowledged that he has yet not been able to stabilize the real estate market. He said the latest by-election result was what awakened him to re-examine his administration's real estate policy. But he reiterated that the foundations of his real estate policy are built on preventing real estate speculation, protecting house seekers, and stabilizing the market by expanding housing supply, and that these foundations will not be changed. President Moon emphasized that the policy will be revised through close consultation and coordination between the party, the government, and the top office so that it can satisfy the public's needs. Hong Yu, Arirang News. And now our Min Soo Kyun has a look ahead at the economic news to come this week. The Korea Development Institute has just released its monthly assessment of economic trends, which shows the recovery continuing. And we'll have jobs numbers on Wednesday and another GDP projection on Friday from the Korea Development Institute. State-run think tank, the Korea Development Institute, released its monthly economic trends report this Monday. In its latest review, the institute saw an easing of the country's economic fallout from the pandemic as the manufacturing sector improved on the back of strong retail sales, exports and facility investment. In the month of March, the average factory operating rate remained high at 75 percent and manufacturing sector exports rose by 3.5 percent on-year. The KDI also said that the struggling service sector saw a slight rebound. Later this week on Wednesday, Statistics Korea will release its employment figures for April. The March figure marked the first month with added jobs since the same month last year in the early days of the pandemic. The government agency attributed the rise to the easing of social distancing measures in February. Eyes are on whether employment will continue to improve in April. The Korea Development Institute will also announce its economic outlook for 2021 on Friday. In its most recent forecast in November last year, it projected 3.1 percent growth this year. However, market watchers expect the KDI to raise its initial outlook. The International Monetary Fund recently raised its growth forecast for Korea this year to 3.6 percent from its January estimate of 3.1 percent. It cited stronger external demand and extra government spending as major reasons for their upward revision. Min Suk Kyun, Arirang News. The economic crisis caused by the pandemic has dealt the biggest blow to the self-employed and to small businesses. The Bank of Korea says this has widened the income gap. President Moon also addressed this issue in his speech today, saying that these people will be getting additional support. Payunji reports. The economic impact of the coronavirus hasn't fallen on everybody equally. Certain groups like the self-employed and those on low incomes have suffered more than others. This used to be one of the busiest streets in Seoul before the pandemic struck. But now, as you can see behind me, business is quiet and a lot of the shops have closed. A woman who runs a flower shop in this area near Ihua Women's University says so many shops have shut down this past year that she can't even name them all. I opened my shop on December 14th last year, and the pandemic struck about two weeks later. All the shops were open then, but in the space of a year, around 30 shops have closed. 30 shops. Just around my flower shop right here. Running a business here has been really, really tough. The Bank of Korea says this has caused the gap between the rich and the poor to widen. According to a report by the central bank on Monday, the income of households in the bottom 20 percent income bracket fell by more than 17 percent, whereas the top 20 percent only saw a decrease of 1.5 percent. It said this is largely due to the large numbers of self-employed and working mothers in this income group, adding that the self-employed have seen their income fall by almost 30 percent since the outbreak. President Moon addressed the growing inequality in a speech on Monday. 코로나 자체로 인한 집간접적 피해도 매우 크지만 코로나로 촉발된 사회 경제의 변화 속에서 성자가 되는 업종과 기업이 있는 반면 
밀려나는 업종과 기업이 있습니다. 코로나로 큰 타격을 받은 업종과 소상공인, 자영업자 등의 어려움을 들어드리기 위해 계속 노력하겠습니다. He added that the government will ensure an employment safety net that will increase the number of those eligible for employment insurance and provide a better employment support program. Peunji, Arirang News. Time now for an in-depth look at the market news this afternoon, and for that, I'm joined on the line by Dr. Yang jun sok Professor of Economics at the Catholic University of Korea. Professor Yang, good to have you back on. Thanks for making time today. Happy to be here. Well, last Friday, stocks on Wall Street ended with a nice gain. Jobs data in the U.S., though, showing that hiring actually plunged. Businesses are having a hard time finding workers because the unemployment benefits are so generous right now, which is ultimately tied to these concerns about inflation we're hearing about. So what's the story in the global markets as we start a new week? Okay, well, I think it'll be more interesting to start on Tuesday of last week, May 4th, uh, when uh, Janet Yellen, uh, U.S. Treasury Secretary, said basically that if the economy overheats, uh, then the monetary policy can be used to try to bring down the economy. Uh, and a lot of people mistook that as a signal saying that interest rate may go up faster than they intended. Uh, now, a lot of economists, when they read uh, Yellen's statement, uh, said that, well, there's nothing controversial about this. Uh, she shouldn't have said it because uh, she's a government official, but still there's not uh, something that's very uh, controversial. This is something you learn in introductory economics. But still, the market took, uh, took that statement very seriously, and we had uh, large uh, this a large fall in uh, Nasdaq of uh, minus 1.9 percent and S&P down about 1 percent on Tuesday. Uh, and then the market started recovering. And then on Friday, uh, they heard that the uh, unemployment uh, the, the, uh, was uh, – falling less than they expected. They expected uh, 266,000, uh, well, they got 266,000 jobs created when they expected uh, 978,000. So that was really uh, large, uh, very much below what the experts had expected. Uh, but the, uh, even though this was a bad economic news, the market seemed to have taken it as good news, because if the economy's recovery is slow, that means the low interest rate will continue much longer. The uh, interest rate will not rise as quickly uh, as some analysts expected. So the market seems to be taking that as good news, and it has led to a uh, stock uh, market uh, price index, uh, stock uh, price increases, not only in the United States, uh, but in Europe as well. So uh, U.S., uh, the uh, market rose on Friday. Uh, Europe, the market rose uh, since uh, Wednesday as well. The Asian markets, uh, Nikkei, uh, Nikkei, Shanghai, Hang Seng, uh, they've uh, shown slightly different results in the last week. Uh, Nikkei is, has been up in the uh, latter part of last week. Shanghai has been uh, going down since uh, end of April. Uh, Hang Seng has uh, dropped since uh, April 30th to May 3rd, but it has been experiencing a very sluggish uh, price rise since. Today, uh, Nikkei is up a little, Shanghai uh, is also up a little, but Hang Seng is down. Well, here in Korea, it seemed uh, investors took their cue from Wall Street with, as you mentioned, uh, the reassurances, it seems, that, uh, that interest rates will stay low, Korean stocks higher for their fourth gain in a row. Retailer investors, uh, it seems, were taking profits, but others buying. Tell us about the local market. Okay, well, the local market closed to ended today at 3,249.30. It was up 1.63%. Uh, uh, but I think what got everybody's attention was that not only was this a historical closing high, but during the trading day, it briefly went above 3,250. So it shows that the uh, Kospi may uh, rise up further 
uh, in the near future. Uh, the uh, increase was led by foreigners, uh, even though they actually bought uh, only 238 billion won of amount of uh, Korean stocks. Uh, uh, the uh, institutions also uh, also bought. They uh, act, uh, so institutions and foreigners bought while individuals sold. And again, the U.S. unemployment figures seem to be acting as encouragement, uh, saying that the interest rate will remain low for a uh, longer period of time. Kostak, uh, it uh, it rose by 1.48 percent. It ended today at 992.80. Foreigners sold Kostak stock, individuals and institutions bought. And now turning to uh, some data, the Korea Economic Research Institute is now calling for GDP growth in Korea this year of 4.1 percent. Economists at LG calling for 4 percent as well. These forecasts are higher than the consensus has been so far this year. What do you make of these projections, Professor? Okay, well, uh, last year everybody is. Uh, Growth projections were in the low 3% range. What we saw in the uh, first quarter of this year was that uh, most of these organizations were readjusting their estimates upwards to high 3% range. But now uh, with LG and the uh, Institute of Finance, we're seeing the predictions go up to 4% range. I think the stronger than expected first quarter growth has a lot to do with it. If you annualize the first quarter growth, it's actually in the 6% range. Uh, now, nobody expects the, uh, such strong growth to continue for all four quarters, uh, but such high first quarter growth, I think, is giving everybody impetus to hope that growth will be a lot higher than what they thought it would be last year. Now, consum uh, if you look at some of the details, uh, the consumption uh, is expected to rise by 2.3 percent. Uh, but note that consumption fell by 4.9% in 2020, so consumption will not reach the pre-coronavirus levels this year. And uh, actually, if you look at the uh, Institute of Finance's last projection, they uh, c assumed that they projected that consum uh, consumption would rise by 2.7%. So domestic consumption is not doing as well as they hoped at the end of last year, uh, whereas business investment uh, they estimated it to be 6.8 percent, which is considerably higher than what they uh, estimated at the end of last year. Uh, and they, they expect investment to be led by semiconductors. Construction is also uh, up from the uh, last estimate, uh, not only due to uh, uh, SOC construction that they expected from last year, but you also have to remember the government has doubled down on building new apartments at the end of last year and beginning of this year, so that's also playing into this as well. Exports are expected to go by 9.2 percent, uh, and uh, we are actually doing a lot better on exports than we expected last year, and we were very optimistic about exports last year. So this, I think, is the main driver on why all these estimates are more and more optimistic this year. Uh, but they do want that growth and recovery, will, be, while it will be faster than expected, it will be very, very uneven. So uh, they should adjust monetary and fiscal policy accordingly. Uh, so it'll concentrate more on not providing more growth, but rather evening out the results of the growth so that uh, the uh, disparities will not increase between the winners and losers. And finally, uh, Professor, it's the start of a new week. Lots of data due out, as always, for one thing on employment in Korea. What's on your radar in the next few days? Okay, well, the uh, government budget figures, uh, government budget trends for uh, March will be out uh, tomorrow, and BOK April uh, financial market trends will be out uh, on Thursday. So those will be uh, numbers to watch. But I think globally, everybody's concentrating on the United States because they are uh, at the forefront of recovery from the coronavirus, and they are counting on U.S. to be the engine of recovery for the global economy. Uh, on Wednesday, they will, uh, U.S. will announce its consumption, uh, consumer price index figures, and inflation figures. Uh, we'll see if the uh, uh, inflation is going to be as bad as what people, uh, people uh, fear. Uh, you will also also have uh, U.S. 10-year bond auctions on Wednesday, so that's another uh, place where we can see how the in, uh, interest rate will act. And then U.S. retail sales will come out on Thursday, uh, so we'll see whether the uh, U.S. recovery uh, is as strong as a lot of what a lot of uh, U.S. analysts uh, think it is going to be. 
All right, Professor, we'll have to leave it there for today and catch up again later in the week. Thanks so much, as always, for your insights today. We appreciate it. Thank you. To encourage people to get vaccinated, the South Korean government has announced that it'll help pay the medical bills of those who suffer severe reactions to their vaccines. Also, an expert panel has announced promising results in the approval process for the vaccine from Moderna. Jang Taehyun reports. Severely ill patients who show adverse reactions after getting a COVID-19 vaccine but can't get compensated due to the lack of causal link can now get support for their medical bills. South Korea's COVID-19 Vaccination Management Task Force announced on Monday that they'll be temporarily helping out patients from Monday next week. The amount of the support will be up to 10 million won, or roughly 9,000 U.S. dollars per person, and covers medical expenses for diseases that occurred following the COVID-19 vaccination. This support project will be implemented from May 17th after a preparation period such as training local government officials. The support will also be applied retroactively to those who were vaccinated before the project's implementation. People who have received a shot or their guardian can visit the community health center to apply for the support. But if there's another reason for the adverse reaction, then they can't get the support. Meanwhile, South Korea on Monday began accepting COVID-19 vaccine reservations for the next group of senior citizens, those between the ages of 65 and 69. This is the second of the three-stage reservation program, which covers people between 60 and 74 who will be getting the AstraZeneca vaccine. The actual inoculations will take place from May 27 to mid-June. And as the vaccination process is ongoing, the country has announced its preliminary review of Moderna's COVID-19 vaccine, which largely backed its approval. The Ministry of Food and Drug Safety on Sunday held its first consultative meeting with an independent advisory panel, which confirmed the vaccine provides 94.1 percent protection against COVID-19 and forms strong antibodies two weeks after the second dose. This is the first of three review stages that the vaccine has to clear before it's approved. Chang Taehyun, Arirang News. Debris from a huge Chinese rocket plunged to Earth on Saturday in an uncontrolled descent that alarmed people around the world. It landed in the ocean and no one appears to have been harmed. But NASA is among those criticizing China's space agency for not following standard procedures when it comes to space debris. Kim Yo sun reports. NASA has criticized China for failing to meet responsible standards after debris from a Chinese rocket likely plunged into the Indian Ocean Saturday night just west of the Maldives. In a statement Sunday, NASA explained that China and other spacefaring nations need to minimize the risks to people and property on Earth when it comes to re-entries of space objects. It added this is crucial to maximize safety, stability, security and the long-term sustainability of outer space activities. China's space agency said most of the rocket, a long March 5B, burned up in the atmosphere. The landing area is located at 72.47 degrees east, 2.5 degrees north, and surrounding waters. The vast majority of its parts were burnt up and destroyed during re-entry into the atmosphere. CNN and other media outlets say it's not yet clear if any debris fell on land. The roughly 30-meter-long stage is among the largest ever pieces of space debris to fall on Earth. Late last month, China launched a piece of its new space station into orbit using the rocket, which weighed almost 20 tons. After its fuel was spent, the rocket was left in space uncontrolled until Earth's gravity dragged it back to the ground. Such a scenario is generally avoided by the international space community, as most rockets conduct more controlled re-entries that aim for the ocean. Failing that, they are left in so-called graveyard orbits that keep them in space for decades or even centuries. Going forward, China plans 10 more launches to carry additional parts of its space station into orbit. Kim Hyo-san, Arirang News. 
Data show that more than 30% of Korea's coronavirus infections in recent months have occurred in places that are poorly ventilated. So the city of Seoul is encouraging people to open up windows and doors frequently. The city notes that homes and businesses will have their own circumstances to consider, but recommends ventilating for 10 minutes every hour. A recent study from MIT suggests that this can reduce the chance of infection by 10%. If there is no window, try at least to open hallway doors or use a ventilating fan. And that brings us to the end of this newscast. Thank you for watching. More live news coming your way at 7 p.m. Korea time.